Hey everyone, it's Chuck Arfine. This is the White Sox Talk Podcast, brought to you as always by our great friends at Wintrust. Hey, I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, a lot of you are traveling this weekend, so wherever you are and wherever you might be going, we got a podcast. Fill your White Sox needs, and we've got one of our old friends with us today, our former NBC Sports Chicago colleague, Kelly Crawl, who's now the sideline reporter for the Atlanta Braves. And if there's someone who knows the Braves inside and out, it is Kelly. So she's going to tell us all about the five players the White Sox got back from the Braves in the Aaron Bummer trade. Who's got the biggest upside and who might be flying under the radar a bit? Plus, Bob Nightingale was on the podcast on Tuesday. Uh, he said the Braves could be a favorite to acquire Dylan C. So if that happens, what kind of players could the White Sox get in return? So it's Kelly Krull giving us the inside scoop on who the White Sox acquired in the Aaron Bummer trade. That is next. All right, join us on the podcast. Oh, this is a treat. It is our great friend, Kelly Krull. I mean, what, what, Guff is like doing a walk-off. He's like running around the bases. He's so happy. Are you kidding me? I'm trying to get. I'm, I, can I reach? I, if I could pull anyone through a screen right now, it's Kelly Krull. Like I would. <laughs> I mean, we have we all have history with Kelly, but Kelly's. Are you kidding me? Her and yeah. I, man, we go like she's family to me. I love Kelly Krull. Yeah. I really do. We we spent a lot of time in '16 together covering that Cubs team. Actually, way before that, but well, we can't say Cubs on this uh, podcast. Oh, it's Cubs! You know what? The Cubs won the World Series. Live. It's like let's move on. I give you credit because that wasn't easy for you, and you were right there helping us every step of the way. <laughs> it was easy. It wasn't that hard. It was a likable team. Uh, I got to yeah. do it with you, Kelly. I mean, come on. It's like, what are you talking about? I, I mean, can't believe that you're actually on the podcast. This is awesome. I miss you guys so much. This is awesome. Thank you. Thank you for thinking of me. And I do. I wish I could reach through and hug you both so much. It's a pleasure to be on today. Yeah, so it's funny because when I started working here in 05, it was 04, but my first baseball season, they put me on the White Sox. They won the World Series. I'm like, you know what? I've got great fortune. I've got great luck with my career, right? Kelly comes, works for us, goes on the Cubs bandwagon. and I don't want to say on the bandwagon, but like you got that whole like Cubs era, World Series. You go to Atlanta, boom, do it again. Right place, right time. I've been so lucky. Guff knows how this goes. I mean, when I came – to Chicago, you guys, that Kevin was looking at the time, Cross was managing everything. He wanted me to do Blackhawks. And then it just so happened that the Cubs hired that Rick Renteria guy who'd been the bench coach where I last was. And because I had his number and was able to get him on on our shows and like Kevin, to his credit, was sort of like, all right, go over and do Cubs. Let's see how this goes. And two, three years later, there we were, Guff in Cleveland, game seven. Uh, that's still, that's one of the most, unbelievable games and i again as you just mentioned chuck getting to do it a whole nother time with another team in the braves uh there's still moments and games and and players and managers that stick out to you that you'll just never forget they're just so special oh, no. and memorable oh yeah a lot of guys from that that there's a lot not yeah. just from the cubs but just like all the people that you know like kelly and, and myself we're on that journey yeah. with you i think yeah. you know i think about i think about yeah and not, we're gonna get into the white Sox, but i I think about like San Francisco, you know, like, yeah, the World Series jumps off the top of the list. But I, I think about some of the cities that you forget about and um, just so much people like they don't want to hear all like the Kumbaya love fests all the time with us. But, you know, you do spend a lot of time together with these people. And Chuck, obviously, is one of my dear friends. But, you know, we know each other's families and kids and all that stuff. And yeah. And uh, parents, and, and it's it's really cool, and, and and here we are. Like you're in Atlanta, and it's it's an easy. This is like phoning a friend and just hanging out. So I love uh, it. We love Basically, the kills together. It still brings us together yep. in every way, doesn't yes. it? This latest, this latest big old trade did it oh, once again. Yeah. Leave it to Aaron Bummer to make this happen. So, uh, <laughs> what's been the reaction in Atlanta over this trade? Because it's just, it was a shocking one on our end because it's like, okay, Aaron Bummer traded, and most White Sox fans are like, okay, see you later. And yes. five players yes. in return, five. Mm -hmm. So what, what's been the reaction in Atlanta? Yeah, five, and, and what I hope for you guys is five really good ones, truthfully, and I hope Aaron Bummer can turn around and be very useful for the Braves. Um, yeah, to be completely honest, I think the initial reaction by Braves fans was like, holy 
moly like what what just happened like uh, did we just get fleeced like how many guys just went back for a guy who had a six era like i don't understand this but then i think when you started breaking it down and i will say one thing that braves fans last maybe two to three years have gotten used to is that like shocker by alex anthopoulos he's pulled it off with freddie freeman and olsen and then he did it again and and i, I and dan's be not staying i i think they've kind of gotten used to like all right, in Alex, we trust. And when you break this trade down, you had a couple guys who, I mean, were approaching the deadline of being non-tendered. And that's what was going to happen with a Mike Soroka, uh, likely what was going to happen with the, Nikki Lopez, um, which I'll break all these guys down for you. But but that was what it came down to for a lot of you. You can't pay Nikki Lopez $4 million when you're starting short stops going to be making $2 million. They just couldn't justify that. Um, you're going to get... Uh, a guy in Jared Schuster, who I think they had seen enough to know that the talent in front of him was who they would turn to before Jared. But that's not to say that I don't think he can be very valuable. He's 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 a kid. He's still still learning. He's still figuring it out. Um, and I'm trying to think who else was in that. Oh, Bra uh, Sh Shoemake, who is obviously also can play that shortstop, probably could play second as well. Um, they, they just had that. He was blocked. They they have that position taken care of. The kid who came up behind him in the farm system, I think, maybe showed them some things that they felt like he could be added to this. And so anyhow, all that to say, I think you guys are getting haul, um, but it was all uh, pieces that within Atlanta's franchise, there just wasn't really a future for anymore. And I, I think Alex is a big proponent of a new – new scenery, see what happens and hope that these guys are great for another team. They just weren't going to be great on the timeline that Atlanta is piecing together right now. Chuck, that's what I said the other day on the podcast is that you have two teams in completely different directions. And you look at the Braves who are a hundred plus win team that have one goal in mind for the next five years. And it's to win a world series and they don't have time to wait around on guys. So if Schuster comes up for, and I mentioned, I think was it Schuster, I made the Giolito count to in Washington where it's like, he's up, he's down. He makes a spark, a start. He gives up five and three innings. Like they just don't have the patience where a kid like that may just need to pitch every five days and learn kind of on the fly at the big league level. And the Braves just aren't in that spot. They're, they're so deep. They have so many guys that can do the job. And when you get that little limited window of availability and you step up and you're 0 for eight or you give up 10 earned and in four innings, it's like next man up. And so that's why I think this could benefit the White Sox. I mean, I look back at this. Schuster was the Braves' number one prospect at the start of the season last year, and he was competing to make the opening day rotation, and he did. And here he is a year later, and this the Braves are like, yeah, we'll trade you. How surprising is that? And, I mean, what could the White Sox be getting a real under-the-radar pitcher that could have a big upside? Yes, 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 and yes to all of those things, all of it. Um, I think it, I think it just goes to show you to to a degree, kind of what Guff was saying. They they have some others in the pipeline. Um, they've added some. You guys, I am so curious. Not, I want to answer your question, but also flip this. I think they might have a thought of trying to see what Bummer can do as a starter. I, I think they saw when he was asked to go every single day as a reliever or to be up and all this. I mean, they have that kind of ability, Chuck, to sort of like play around with this and see because they've got one, two, three, and four already locked into their rotation so long as they stay healthy. They got like three or four guys that could be their fifth fifth starter next year. And I think he's one that they could play around with. When you look at what they have in the bullpen already and signing um, Lopez the other day, like I, I think they have the ability to just experiment a little bit with him and see what they can do. And uh, Rick Kranitz is like a miracle worker, it feels like, when he, it comes to getting pitchers and re, um, kind of establishing them. I just look at what Pierce Johnson did coming from. He's a, he's a reliever who they picked up at the deadline from Colorado above 6 ERA, and he had a .76 ERA in nearly 24 innings after coming over to the Braves. I and mean, that's the kind of thing that you just never know. But to your point and Jared Schuster, I think you're right. At the big league level, if he can go every fifth day, uh, the the upside for him is is tremendous and he's he's a nice kid you're getting a good good guy that's the other thing I want to say every single one of these guys you're getting are high character guys I think that goes a long way but uh Michael Soroka is the one that I and I know every Braves fan out there is truly rooting for down the road that a change of scenery turns him into the guy they saw in like 2018-19 I'm trying to remember that timeline but of course back to back Achilles tears in the right 
the right foot, which of course is his pushing off, which you know is different from the landing foot for a pitcher. And so, I mean, he started to gain some traction last year. There just wasn't enough time. And he got a little forearm tightness towards the end of the year, which I attribute more than anything to trying to speed up that timeline to be ready for them when they thought they might need him in the postseason. I don't think he's a guy that necessarily you need to worry about that with in the future. But um, he is uh, such a tremendous well. So imagine the um, mental where that back to back tears to try and come back and all that you have to put in to be back at that level. I just, I, his mental strength is off the charts. I will say that about him and he, and he's still young. So, um, and Nikki Lopez might be a former colleague of ours. Um, Joe, help me out guys. Uh, went to CBS HQ. Joe worked for us. Um, uh, this is terrible. Oh, Muso? Yes. He yeah. and Nikki are childhood friends. So drop that. Oh, name. really? Drop mine first because Nikki oh, and yeah. I, man, I'll tell you what, he is awesome. Awesome, awesome. And he's an awesome teammate. Like, I hope he starts for you guys. I really do because that was one thing he wasn't going to get to do with the Braves. I think he knew that, but he was battling the whole, it's so much fun to be on a winning team like this, but at the same time wanting to play every day and he was, wasn't going to. And, um, he he is just one of those galvanizing type of uh, teammates and guys and um, chemistry dudes and yeah I just I really really I did we, he wasn't a brave time oh sorry yeah but I chemistry remember. dudes I heard yes. I heard chemi I heard chemistry dudes Chuck how many chemistry dudes did the White Sox have last year uh, negative four <laughs> yeah uh, I, I I'll take chemistry dudes. You're I'll take as many uh, as possible. Yeah, and the other thing with him, I mean, it's a great story, right? Like yes. he grew up a White Sox fan, and he was at Game Two of the World Series, Paul Canerico's Grand Slam homer. The ball landed right in front of his seat. Right? He's a uh, just so happy to be back in Chicago, and he can play some good defense. White Sox need that. Uh, they have to figure out the offense at some point, but uh, they're doing what they can to help the defense, and that's a definite plus for them. He does it all. He does. And I, I guess you guys, I guess you guys got your shortstop. So he's a kid that can play second too. We're just kind of a patchwork, Kelly. Okay. Like, let's be honest. This you is like uh, like Paul DeYoung, right? You guys like that? I Paul mean, DeYoung. I mean, do we, I think he's fine. He's a nice, he's a, he's a player that's needs a big rebound year after getting traded to what twice he played for three teams last year. Yeah. Didn't work out after the trade. He's he's fine. He plays good defense. He comes from a chemistry dude, supposedly. Yeah. So okay. the White Sox, here, here's what the White here's where the White Sox are, Kelly. You have to they have to fix everything. Leadership, the room, and the product on the field. And I think that the that's a that's an awfully daunting task to wow. do in one offseason. Yeah, and I don't know that it can be done in one, but but I'd rather fix the, to be honest with you, and you know this coming from a, a great clubhouse, I'd rather than fix the room, get the room right before you start worrying about what the field looks like. Because if, if, if your room's not good and the field product is bad, well, then what are we doing here? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, there, there, we've seen it, right? There are teams that have won off chemistry even more so than necessarily being the most talented. And I, I think oh, this yeah. was prime example of that this year. Um, I would argue to this to this day that the Braves had the most talent of any team that was out there, but they weren't clicking on all cylinders when it mattered most. Um, and we saw that from a few teams, a few teams this season. <laughs> the Dodgers are probably doing the same thing right now. Yeah, but the postseason is a different animal. All right, so how about Braden Shoemake? Another first-round pick. There's three first-round picks in this trade. Uh, he was competing for a starting – shortstop job at spring training last year so kind of like schuster it's like okay now here's another guy who has some upside and what can you tell us about him yes and in fact came up during the season when orlando arcia got hurt at one point in time and um did a great job defensively it's always been the offense that's been the question for Braden shoemake and consistency at the plate but again this was a guy who like guff said he he did a lot of coming up and down last season and i think that 
consistently playing every day at the big league level will be um, a huge game changer for him. I really do. Um, he's a hard worker um, and he got his first shot last year. So he could finally got a taste of the big leagues. And I think that'll motivate him going into this season. But yeah, defensively, you're going to love having him because between he and Nikki, if, if you need those two out there at the same time, that's, that's going to be, yeah, up the middle. That, that looks really good. Kelly, let me ask you a question real quick before we keep going. How you've, you've seen like the complete team. I mean, in Atlanta, you've been dealing with it left and right. You know, the difference between being in a clubhouse that works versus being in a clubhouse. You don't really even want to be in like as a media member. And then the product on the field and how it translates. What has been the biggest takeaway from those Atlanta teams that you've been covering the last, what, four or five years? Yeah. And like applying that to the White Sox. Because I think we we sit here and talk about culture, and I think people get sick of hearing that word. And they, they're like, oh, it doesn't matter. They still suck on the field. But baseball is a different beast because of the everyday thing. What's going on? Like the guys, you, you keep talking about every one of these guys in this trade. You keep saying – Good dude, good makeup, good character, clubhouse dude. Yeah. Why is that why is that so important to yeah. what the Braves have done? Because I it's love that they've groomed these guys. I, that's that's yeah. my favorite part. Is they're coming from the, a team like the Braves. It's hard to put a definition on culture, I feel like, because it's something you feel more than you can really explain. Um, and I think guys and players at this level, uh, <laughs> same for them. It's the same. It's the same for them. And to your point, these are all guys coming your way that have felt it with the team in the Braves. And I would argue that it's doing all the little things every day without having to be held accountable by a manager or a veteran. It's it's having your young guys come up and be ready every single day and understand the routine of getting ready. I think Ron Washington was a huge part of that for the Braves. He's a guy that we're uh, going to miss tremendously. I'm so thrilled for him, though, for the Angels, um, for him to get a second chance at managing and really just for baseball to have Ron Washington at the helm again is, is, is great for the game. But um, that's a really great question, Guff. I just think um, I love going into the clubhouse every day. I love it because there is a group of 30 to 40 guys on that team that are high character guys that do things the right way, that are accountable, that are your back into the bullpen guys who know they need to stand in front of us on a night that they didn't do well, but also understand we're going to come and talk to them on a night they did. Same with the players who go 0 for 20 at one point during a stretch, but then when they're on a heater, we're there at both times. They understand that it's part of the job, the highs and lows. I think it comes from a manager who's also just, you know, even keel as much as it goes. I don't know a whole lot about, um, you you guys, as far as fall. leading this group, I, well, I, I think manager and above, I think, right? Yeah. So um, they're very, very fortunate in that regard that they have a lot of good people, good humans, uh, accountable, responsible people in the right positions. And and you guys all know this, right? When your best players, your, your Ronald Cunha Juniors, are in at 2 p.m. every day or noon every day in the cage, putting in the work, then it doesn't allow anybody else on that team to not be there every day showing up for early work. So that's the standard that's been set. Yeah, I remember seeing there was a game by White Sox Braves out of the All-Star break. And the White Sox season was basically already uh, on the fritz. Yeah. And the Braves had this humongous lead. They're, you guys are doing great. And Acuna hits this uh, home run like the eighth inning ninth inning to get the Braves back in the game. It's like, you know what? The, do the Braves really need this win? You looked at him after he hit the home run in the dugout and he was acting like it was the playoffs, right? And the White Sox needed that game so much more than the Braves did, but you saw it on Acuna's face. I'm like, oh, this is what this means for this entire team, what he means to the team. And the Sox didn't seem to have that last season. Yeah, they, well, one through nine at any point in time, any single one of those guys could have turned the game around. But you don't have to have a lineup stack like that. If you've got guys, like Guff said, you know, you're all pulling on the same rope. You're all pulling in the same direction. You're rooting for one another because it's not going to all go well at the same time. That's for sure. I don't know if there was ever a point in the Brave season where all of them were clicking at the same time, but they were able to win a whole bunch of ball games because three and four were the next week it was the other three or four or whatever it, it may be. But um, I think that is, I think that is a step-by-step -step process. You look back and the Braves were probably where the White Sox are 
just four years ago, five years ago. I mean, mm. right on the brink of, of, of being at that playoff level. And so that's how quickly it can turn around with the right, with the right guys in place. So I certainly mm. hope that the five that are coming your direction are those guys. And who's got the biggest upside of those players the White Sox acquired? Gosh, that's a great question. Um, oh, if Michael Soroka can return to form, no doubt about it. Um, I, Jared Schuster's so young, I don't even know what to think yet. Um, and really, I just think Nicky Lopez brings so many intangibles to the table to go along with his skill set that um, the sky's the limit for him. Braden's the real question for me. He he's the one that I'm not really sure. That first time he's been traded, I don't I don't know how this goes for him to be honest. And like I said before, uh, the righty just got got traded or excuse me got picked up in the draft last year. So I really don't know a lot a lot about him at all. But I guess he could be too. Who knows? Nobody knows yet with him. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, tell me about what you guys learned or what I'm going to enjoy about having what? about the White Sox bullpen that you're requiring. Yes. <laughs> Aaron Bummer yeah. and Ronaldo Lopez. Got him. We got two guys. Uh, mm -hmm. Lopez, three years, 30 million. Congrats to him. He obviously has uh, really turned his career around as a, as a reliever. I saw that there was some talk about maybe turning him into a starter again, but uh, Lopez is just lights out. He stays healthy. His arms always healthy. Uh, Bummer. He's got great stuff, and I think with the right defense behind him and a good catcher, uh, he'll have a good season. But uh, we like Guff. Uh, yeah, we Guff went off the uh, the reservation with uh, Aaron Bummer about a year ago. Yeah, ago. give me a second, Kelly. I'll fall, I'll pull up what you'll see a lot from Aaron Bummer when it's not going well. Okay, oh so just get just give me a minute, and I'll find the Aaron Bummer stink face. Okay, we well, as grew to love here in Chicago. That brings up a good point, though, right, to what to what you're saying earlier. I will say that there have been guys that have come over at the deadline or whatever to this Braves team. And one in particular, I mean, he was brought over to begin the season, but like Sean Murphy catching. Here's a great yeah. example of a guy who coming from Oakland. They've got a lot of Oakland guys actually on this team now, um, he and Matt Olson. But um, he discussed the pressure that's on a player when they're not on a team that is all that successful. Um, they feel like they got to do it all. They feel like they got to be great all the time. And I think Sean Murphy learned last year by being able to kind of split the responsibilities with Travis Darno that you're able to stay fresh. You're able to be, it, it, it's not all on you to get the job done every night. Somebody else is out there. And that's what I'm hoping with Aaron Bummer is that he understands in whatever the role is moving forward he just has to be good when they ask him to be, but there will be somebody behind him that can pick him up if he's not. And that's, that's what I'm, I'm hoping for his sake um, that, that that bodes well for him. I'm going to give you a less than bold prediction here. I think Bummer's going to have a stellar year and be a stud for you guys. There you go. I do. I really do. I really think he's going to go in there and dominate with that stuff that he talks about all the metrics that favor his stuff. That wipeout slider is one of the best in the game when he's on. And I think he's going to go to an organization that's in a different place and knows how to develop pitching. He's kind of a lost cause here at this point. There's really no place for a left-handed reliever that has that kind of stuff on this team when they're kind of going nowhere. Sorry about the Columbus Blue Jackets music in the background. That's where I'm at. But I think Bummer's going to thrive in Atlanta. I really do. And I think he's going to be locked into that late seventh inning-ish role, Kelly, and – and yeah, you're going to get some, there will be some frustration. There will be frustration when he comes in with inherited runners and goes 2-0 on the first batter. And there's a little swinging ground bunt, or ground ball swinging bunt. The bases are loaded and he hits the next batter and then he gets out of it, but gives up the game tying run. There'll be frustration, but his stuff, I think he's going to thrive in Atlanta. I really do. I like now I feel bad. Now I feel bad. He, I, I saw this morning he posted a, a farewell on his Instagram, and I, I just read it, and I was like, "All right." I mean, I feel like, okay, this is time for him to move. Just time for him to move on from Chicago. Yeah, well, and that's important. The change of scenery. We talked about it. Mike Soroka. It was the same deal. He is a fan favorite. Don't get me wrong, but um, they just, you know, you can't justify investing what they were going to have to um, after the last three years with him. But uh, to your point with with 
with Aaron Bummer. If, if and when that were to happen, Goff, those situations, I will tell you, I know relievers love when the offense can turn around. As long as it's not the bottom of the ninth, their offense has a chance to bring them back into any game. Yeah. So must be nice when you're a pitcher and you can come out and have that kind of, I don't know, pressure taken off your shoulders to a degree. Do the best you can, but if that's not your night, your offense will pick you up. <laughs> well, one more thing. Uh, so we had Bob Nightingale on the podcast and he said oh, that, you know, the Braves could be in the running for Dylan Cease. Mm. And so who would the White Sox get in return for a Dylan Cease trade? Obviously some top prospects, some guys who don't have uh, any more spots or any, there is no more position for them to play. I mean, you mentioned Nicky Lopez, but yeah. um, who, who, who would we be talking about if the White Sox were to make a Dylan Cease trade with the Braves? Yeah, this is so interesting, right? Because I wasn't sure if Alex was just going to go out and buy a starting pitcher. They are definitely in the starting pitcher market. That that That's for sure. So were they just going to go buy a Sonny Gray, which has certainly been in the headlines, or is it something like a Dylan Cease? And I will say this, the only guys they really have to give up at this point, I mean, they're going to be guys that you kind of already know what you're getting. Because I think at that point, you're going to be looking at somebody like, Oh, I know Braves fans don't want to hear this, but you got to give up something to get something. That is just how it goes. I think Von Grissom will be in that mix, and Von Grissom has proved that he can absolutely hit at the major league level, and he is such a fun personality, fun kid to have around. Um, he just doesn't exactly have a position with the Braves. They tried the shortstop thing last year. He wasn't quite ready. Now that left field is an opening, I think that that's going to be their next thought for him but truth be told um i i think he'll be in the mix um i think the waldrop kid who basically went through every minor league level last year and is only a year or so out of college but i mean he's shown that he has the stuff absolutely and that he's got the uh the mindset to be a big league pitcher and i i know that they would love to see what he could do along you guys another I would hate to say he would be in the mix, but AJ Smith Schauber is another one. I mean, there you've got two young, young pitchers, and you've got a young position play. All three could be in could be in play. I don't know what that package looks like, Chuck. Do you? I mean, how I, much I, I, I have one here. I have one here from a Braves podcast. Okay. That uh, and it's from today, as we're taping this, where they were coming up with a trade proposal for C and like eight, all the eight, what's that? Is, is this Justin Toscano and the AJC who whose podcast? Uh, Braves today. Okay, Johnny yep. Venters and Ben Taylor. Yeah, okay. uh, their proposal. Their proposal. Basically, they're saying you're not going to get C's without giving up AJ Smith Shaver or or or, or Hurston Waldrop. So Waldron. one of the two. Yeah, one of the two have to be. So his proposal was Smith Shaver, Vaughn Grissom, and Owen Murphy. I okay. think the White Sox I like don't know much about. Murphy, but the I can tell you right now, if you get those two, they're talented, they're young, and they're only going to get better. And I, I, that'd be a tough, like where the White Sox are. You know how I feel about Cease, Chuck. I mean, we've talked about yeah. it at length. I don't want the White Sox to trade him. But when you look at the scenario of where the team is, that's a pretty damn good package. I mean, that's going to be a, that would be a really tough turn down for Chris Getz, I think, with that type of, because you're getting guys, Kelly, that are, that can play. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I think it, uh, uh, a Dylan Cease trade has to look like. You can't just go and get like four single A kids. You need to have some guys that are have either broken through into the big leagues or on the cusp of doing that. And with this package, I think with what you're saying, that this sounds perfect. Yeah. I love the mental makeup. I mean, I didn't get to meet Waldrop last year because obviously at the time his innings had exceeded what they felt comfortable with to bring him up by postseason play. But um AJ Smith Shaver, guys, is a Texas kid who, like a lot of our other Texas guys, I don't know, the AJ mentors, this and that. He's the one that I'll never forget stepping up to, knowing good and well he might be starting a playoff game against the Phillies. And this is a kid who's <laughs> it's his first year in the league. And I kind of was like, so I mean, if that were to happen, how you feeling? This is all just just he and I, you know, no camera around, just shooting the breeze. And he's like, listen. Have you ever been to a Texas football game on a Friday night? <laughs> is like, that what he said? He he truly like sometimes it's like ignorance is bliss, right? Give me he up, truly man. believed that leading a quarterback on a Friday night in front of God knows how many fans at a high school football game was going to be the same thing as stepping out there on the mound. He was like, "Let me show you. Let me show I want you." That. 
he in in not a cocky way in a no 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 I want that I believe in myself oh. and I know I know how my stuff plays it was and it was very eye opening for me to kind of be like okay kid let's let's see what you got. I'm, I'm not rooting for a Dylan C's trade, but I, this is the type of package I'm like hearing you say that Kelly makes me want a J Smith shopper on the White Sox like yesterday. So this, like, and I, and this, I'm just reading this post. They're saying, yeah, a J Smith shopper could very well be Dylan C's in three years, but the Braves, again, as we've talked about throughout this podcast, they don't have three years. They need guys who are ready. who have yeah. been proven right now. And Dylan C's would go home. I mean, he's a, he's a Milton, Georgia. Great, Milton, Georgia grew up a diehard grew up a Braves fan. So Alex really likes and, to do that too, as I'm sure you guys have yeah. noticed. How many Atlanta guys he loves to get back if he can. And there's something to that. The hometown yep. kid, the pride that you feel putting on that jersey. I think he thinks it motivates guys a little differently. Who knows if there's yeah, I, I, I I would be if if I were a GM, I would act I I'd I'd be Alex Anthopoulos, I think. Because he don't give a shit. He doesn't wait. He doesn't wait for anybody else to dictate the market. He goes out like he gets what he wants. Like even this trade, he knew what the deadline. He knew what he was facing. He who's he like? We want that lights out reliever that's already under control that we don't have to mm -hmm. give an obnoxious amount of money to because we're going to give thirty million already to the other guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he can give he can give you three players he was going to end up non tendering anyway. And it looks yep. like a great deal. And it could be a great deal for both both sides. And then look, they didn't get Aaron Nola. I guarantee you. Alex Anthopoulos isn't sitting isn't sitting with his phone off the day before Thanksgiving, going, yeah, let's just put it down for three days. He might attack tomorrow. You never know. Like I love how aggressive he is. I love that he spends money. I love that he never stops hustling. I love that he's sickened to death probably by the early exit in the postseason and he wants to do better. I, God, I wish we had that. Oh. Well, we'll see where this goes. Hey, Kelly, this has been great catching up with you, giving us some information, but more than information, just being able to talk to our, our dear friend, Kelly Kral. Same, guys. This I, I wish we could do this more often. Maybe maybe the cease trade will happen and we can do this again in like a week. <laughs> I would love it. Happy it probably will happen now. All right. Well, have a great Thanksgiving, Kelly. Same. Love you guys. Oh. All right, that's Love a wrap you. for this edition of the White Sox Talk Podcast, brought to you by Wintrust, your home for White Sox. Check in with free ATMs nationwide. Go to the special White Sox webpage, www.wintrust.com slash Sox. Hawk Harrelson, take it away. Thanks, our Chuck. And this edition of the White Sox Talk Podcast is over.